are your valedictorians tonight. Having this number of students with this honor is extremely rare, but as I introduce them to you tonight, you will see what wonderful, well-rounded young adults they are and how deserving they are of this recognition. At this time, it is with great pleasure that I introduce Class of 2019 valedictorian, Jacob Daniel Hare. Imagine 
spending 12 days and nights with Mr. Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Carmichael's has given me opportunities that I believe very few schools offer in the curriculum. I have had the chance to meet judges at the county courthouse, be recognized at the state congress and governor's mansion, and had the greatest time of my life at the environmental competition in Idaho. When in Idaho, we saw wonders that I could only dream of seeing, like the Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. This experience was brought to me through this school and the enthusiasm of Mr. Willis. Mr. Willis is a king of field trips, and he gets a little flat for taking so many, but I have to say, he creates experiences you can't replicate in the classroom. Not only is the class of 2019 successful in extracurricular activities, but the teachers over there should be seated, uh, seated there should thank us because we got them thinking about their retirement plan. <laughs> Mr. Galino says that we are the class that no one will ever forget. I don't really know if that's good or bad, but we'll take it. <laughs> I'll miss Briggs's overjoyed complexion I see each morning in the hallway and a standard eye roll. He always asks me about the weather, and my predictions are correct, but he doesn't like to admit it. He always brings up one snowstorm I was wrong on five years ago, but I would say that's pretty good if you can only get it on one. But this year, there was a big snowstorm coming in, and I got the whole school in a firestorm by saying in my daily weather report in history class that there would be a two hour delay and possibly cancellation. Well, the day before the storm came in, the one call from the school called to the houses. Everybody thought it was a two hour delay call, but instead it was me calling to get people to come and donate to the blood drive. <laughs> However, people like Briggs mad at me, but what can I say? It's a perfect advertisement opportunity. And then a few hours later, the two-hour delay came through and eventually cancellation, and everybody loved me again. <laughs> and then I proceeded the next day to rub into Briggs' face, and I was right yet again. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Every time there would be a snowstorm coming in, I would be called down to the office during physics class. I'd be pounded with questions from the secretaries and then asked multiple questions from Mrs. Trebecki whether or not to our delay would come. Mr. Warcraft would even ask me, and when I got back to class, everyone would say, well, what did you say to them? Did you tell them that we should have a two-hour delay? Well, maybe. <laughs> Mr. Hess is another person that I'll dearly miss. My dad wanted me to say that he can still beat you on the basketball court. There is not a single person in this room that does not love Mr. Lane. Mr. Lane is truly the nicest person you'll ever know about us. And finally, the last teacher I want to highlight, and all the teachers are fantastic, but Mr. Estoka, Captain Johnny Physics, we like to call him. He's one of the funniest people you know, but in no way does he try to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> he is very smart in what he does, but he's a little clumsy in his character. If you know him, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Physics 2 was a new class this year, and there were eight of us in it. We called it the Physics Society, and we basically forced him into taking us to Kenny. The funny thing is that he said he would go, not only if we paid for our tickets, our food, and even the tolls on the way there, because he forgot an extra change. And if we drove any farther, he would have had us pay for gas. But we had a fantastic time, and sorry I elbowed you a couple times on the button. Well, I better start to wrap it up, because we have two more speeches, and Stephen is next, so you better be prepared for that one. <laughs> High school has been a wild ride for everyone involved with the class of 2019. I firmly believe that we will leave this building tonight and be prepared for what lies ahead. We may doubt ourselves at times, but in the end, I know we will be successful in our future endeavors. I wanted to leave with the final paragraph from my friends of 2019 that my mom really wanted me to put in. It's from my dad's old workbook. I have no idea who it is written from, but it's titled, titled Don't Be Afraid to Fail. Here we go. You failed many times, although you don't remember. You fell down the first time you tried to walk. You almost drowned the first time you tried to swim. Did you hit the ball the first time you swung the bat? Heavy hitters, the ones that hit the most home runs, also strike out in the lot. R.H. Macy failed seven times before a store in New York caught on. Novelist John Creasy got 753 rejection slips before he published 564 books. Babe Ruth hit 714 home runs, but he also struck out 1,330 times. The message is, don't worry about failure. Worry instead about the chances you miss when you don't even try, end quote. Again, I want to thank everyone here tonight, and as always, once a mic, always a mic. Thank you.
activities include being a member of the National Honor Society, Senior Standing Committee, Envirothon, Academic League, Captain, Broadcasting, including the morning, morning Announcements crew, Peer Court, Debate Team, SAD, Quarterbacks for Life. He's also won multiple awards and scholarships, including two times state championship for the Envirothon, resulting in $3,500 worth of scholarships. In the fall, Stephen plans to attend Penn State University and major in Computer and Information Science Technology. I present to you valedictorian Stephen John Sequoia. you know that 
the entire time I studied for wildlife, I watched Spongebob. <laughs> it was the only thing that really could keep my mind focused when I was learning about the mating season of the Woodland Jumping Mouse. <laughs> Miss Hathaway, I think the broadcasting department is in pretty good hands and has a great future to it. Working with you throughout the years exposed me to so much, and I thank you so dearly for your dedication in making it what it is today. Mr. Stoka, thank you not only for Physics 2 Society, as Jacob said before, but for being one of the greatest people I've ever had the honor of speaking to. That Kenny Wood trip was honestly some of the most fun I've had in a long time. Make sure next year when your kids go, they have to calculate the sign curve of cosmic chaos before they can ride it. Ms. Rice, I don't know how you managed to do what seemed like everything in the school at once while still having such an informative class, but it was amazing. Thank you for helping me to talk good and for the incredible letter of recommendation. And lastly, thank you to all the families, friends, and everyone in between of all of us out there. Make sure you guys hug them on the way out here. To my own cabbage patch out there, I love your mom, dad, Aunt Kimmy, Uncle Dave, Mom, Pappy, Pat Bruce, Nana, Aunt Jesse, Alex, Marie, and the best sissy in the world, Emily. She had me put in that last bit there. She says we're like this, and she's pretty right on that. You all are the reason why I keep on trucking every day. I want to keep doing you all proud when all of this is over. So I'll leave with that. Thanks for listening, everyone. Wherever all of you are going, get them. Because when you want to do something, do it right away. Do it while you can. It's the only way to live a life without regrets. Thank you.
I would also like to thank Lieutenant Kelly Cartwright for sharing a few words of wisdom with us. I would like to personally congratulate Jacob Parrott and Stephen Sequoy for being co-valedictorians with me. Lastly, congratulations to the entire class of 2019 for your hard work and dedication that have paid off in reaching this milestone tonight. Almost 14 years ago, we started this journey together on our first day of kindergarten. There were many different emotions that day from us, as well as our families. We were about to enter a new chapter of our lives. Some of us were excited, while others would have rather stayed home to play. Over the next seven years, we learned a lot from our great elementary teachers. They were the ones who built the foundation to get us where we are today. Not only did they help us to learn reading, writing, and math, but they also taught us how to behave in class, how to work together, and how to treat each other. Some of us had the opportunity to be in Mr. Moorcraft's sixth grade class, but now we are, only, we are all going to be his first graduating class as superintendent of Carmichael Third High School. As we progress through our years here, we have seen Mr. Moorcraft go from sixth grade teacher to elementary principal to superintendent. Watching his hard work and dedication pay off as he rose through the ranks has been inspiring to us. Can you please give him a round of applause? Thank you to the rest of the Senior Standing Committee for your great ideas and hard 
work and preparation for all our activities this year. Finally, we would all like to thank our families for their support and dedication in fundraising to ensure that we had a memorable senior year. In closing, to the class of 2019, I consider myself fortunate to have been given the chance to spend my school years with you and watch all of you grow in the classroom and as people. I wish all of you success in what the future brings you. Never forget where you came from and always know where you are going. And if you, ever, if, and if you ever lose your way, always remember, once a mic, always a mic.